He's ready to go. Looks like Mark Cuban. I mean, this guy. Okay, let's, let's just <laughs> get him on. Uh, John oh, no. Macaroon, you guys know who he is. By the way, as always, this is sponsored by Bet US. Mr. Macaroon, you guys know who he is. This Detroit is crazy. Life, Sports Illustrated, yeah. host of the Lone Wolves podcast, Detroit Sports Podcast. So please welcome our guest. Joins us every single Wednesday. John Macaroon. John, get in here. How you doing? Well, you know what, Doc? You, you, you shaved off about, not only you shaved off your beard, but you might have shaved off about 10 years. All right, you look good, Doc. I want to ask you, start it off with the obvious. Monday, Lions made a trade. Or uh, Tuesday. Was it Monday or Tuesday? Shit, now I forgot. Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. Tuesday, Tuesday morning. morning. Yeah, Tuesday morning, Lions made a trade. We've been waiting on it. Who would it, Who was it going to be? We've been talking to you about it. Zadarius Smith is a Detroit Lion. Your thoughts on the deal, the player, what they paid for him, um, and just the trade deadline in general. What's your thoughts on it all, Doc? I'm very happy. It was amazing because, first and foremost, I think everybody kind of figured out why Zadarius Smith posted SMH on Twitter that morning. And luckily for me, I got up early. I was ready for it. And you see the tweet, and you're like, oh, my gosh, what does that mean? He's not coming to town. Oh, is he upset? Most likely – he figured out that his vacation for his bye week got canceled because the Lions traded for him. He was on his bye week this week. He he played nine games, and he's a veteran, probably had a nice trip planned, and realized that, oh, my goodness, I got to stop it. I got to cancel it. And it happened literally like half hour later. Zadarius Smith is a member of the Detroit Lions. And the Lions did him a solid. They give him two days off. He's not going to report till Friday. I surmised that by asking Dan Campbell today. It was pretty clear, like, okay, what are you going to do with this guy? I mean, poor guy can't get a week off. He could play 18 games this year and beyond. But I'm excited. Like everybody said, uh, like your previous guests have said, I'm very happy they upgraded the defensive line and they addressed an area of need. And you remember last year, they didn't do that. They paraded out like it was important, Donovan (laughs) Peoples-Jones. This year, it's a little bit more of a higher caliber player that's going to contribute to this football team. I'm very excited to see what he brings to the table. Clearly, guys, the sack totals have diminished. They're almost non-existent. I think one sack the last couple games. I want to see how he complements the defensive line. Hey, I interrupted the doc to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, and that is Bet US, which right now you guys can get in on the Detroit Lions taking on the Houston Texans. They're favorited by three and a half, which I love it. Um, you see it minus 110. I'm going to go ahead and throw $100 on it to win 90. I think the Lions win this game, and I do think they cover the spread. So I'm going to go ahead and place that bet, lock it in, and there you go. We are locked in for this upcoming game this weekend, Sunday night football. You know how the Lions play in that type of environment. They are going to be ready to play, and you guys can get 150% on your first deposit, 125% on your second and third deposit for up to $2,000 using code YouTube 150. Check it out. Bet US. Let's get back to the video. Hey, yeah, Doc, I mean, th- that's my question to you because we've had this conversation with you over the last few weeks leading up to the trade deadline. Um, and, and I know kind of how you felt a little bit that, it, it, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it was, hey, you need to make a deal uh, to stay in this Super Bowl race. And, and I remember, I think we had the conversation two or three weeks ago that if they didn't make a move, that there it, there was a question on if they can compete for a Super Bowl, um, especially with the AFC the way it is. Do you think now Zadarius Smith is that because we were pushing the Max Crosby stuff and that's a bigger player? Do you think with Zadarius Smith that they're going to be able to go out there and compete and that D line can still take a step forward? Obviously, it won't get to what it was before, but it could take a big enough step to be able to uh, win a Super Bowl. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, first and foremost, thank Thanks, you, John Doc. Hughes. I appreciate that. Yeah, I was in the zone today. I was good uh, reporting, asking questions, getting the information I needed. And for those that want to know, no, I'm not looking for a new job. Like I said, it's a new dawn. It's a new era. For the 60 seconds, I'll talk about myself. The numbers are skyrocketing. The video views are beyond even my wildest imagination. So when the video views get to that level, I got to look a little bit more like, hey, this is going out to a lot of people. And I figured, you know what? You know, uh, it's a new era. I'm feeling good. You guys know the new cycle from the time that Aiden Hutchinson got injured until now has just been crazy. It's just been news after news after news after news. And I thank everybody for visiting a little slice of the internet, Lions on SI. And then the trade deadline rumors were just out of the, out of this world. Uh, People love and are invested in the Detroit Lions. They wanted to upgrade the team. And Zadarius Smith is a player 
that's going to help this defense um, get more pressure. And, but the question is, are they Super Bowl caliber? <sighs> Look, I don't want to pop anyone's balloon, and I don't want to, like, this is a festive mood. I'm in a festive mood, and I think everybody knows probably yeah. why. My ass probably saved a lot of money, <laughs> and <laughs> I'm very happy about that. That puts a smile on my face, hopefully. But uh, in my mind, I'm a guy that's 45 years old. I have lines PTSD, so I'm always – in that zone of what can go wrong, who can be a football team that defeats the Lions. I want the Lions. Look, I've, I'm, I'm traveled. I'm ready to go to New Orleans if it happens. But my season prediction has always been the Lions get there and lose. I think they're good enough offensively. That's going to be the biggest question mark. Defensively, can they gel fast enough? Is that enough? To me, I'm never satisfied with the roster. I want more. I want... You know, I wanted uh, Aziz Ojolari. I know you typically don't get two at the same position. I just wanted to stock up uh, and get players. And then you see the commanders, who I think are kind of the next up-and-coming team. They get Marshawn Lattimore. That's in a move directly to try and stop you. And that's a guy that knows Dan Campbell. So that's some intel. So that's some sophisticated maneuvering by that team over there in Washington. But, look, if they can continue to play like this offensively, Nobody in the world is stopping them. But remember this. the One of the best defensive coordinators resides in Kansas City. And I know people love to look at uh, the quarterback in Patrick Mahomes, but Steve Spagnuolo is, is a really talented defensive coordinator and among the, amongst the best in the league. So, you know, if it's the Lions and the, the, the Chiefs in the Super Bowl, I'm having a heart attack. If it's the Lions and the Ravens, I'm having a heart attack for different reasons. But – Look, that's the fun ride we're going to go on. But I can't, me, me personally, sit here and just tell you guys they're going to win the Super Bowl. I feel like I'd be setting you up for failure. I think they're a good football team that has to continue to, to grow and play well offensively, stay healthy. But it's just too far to project at this point. It's fun. But uh, there are some good teams that down the road you got to pay attention to in the NFC, like the Eagles, like the Falcons, like the Commanders, like the 49ers. So there's a long way to go, but we're seven and one and we're as close. The Lions are as close to Super Bowl caliber as they've ever been. And this is the wild ride that we go on. And I can't wait to see it. It's close, but I would have liked one more move to kind of ease the anxiety that anybody would have if the Lions get there. And Doc, talking about the defense, talking about the Darius Smith, but two moves that were made today and they weren't acquisitions, but Emmanuel Mosley and Iffy both backed up, opened their windows so they can return. How soon do you think we're going to see those players back? And what do you think that impact will have on this defense, given how good the secondary has already been looking in the last couple of weeks? Yeah, it's a nice it's a nice opportunity. So what happens is, you know, they're coming back from injury, so their 21-day window is open. The Lions are going to evaluate if they're ready. I think it would be just a great addition to that secondary, right, to add depth with Emmanuel Mosley. He's just been bitten by the injury bug. If Atu Melifanu, another, uh, another physical presence. So if those guys can be active over the next three weeks and they showcase that they're healthy and can be contributing, I think they'll get to the 53-man roster. I don't know about both. Maybe one. You hope for one. But, hey, man, it's it's a great it's great news because you've seen it now. You know, the secondary can use as much help as possible. They're growing and developing. The safeties are playing out of this world. And as much help as you can get, hey, it's it, I think it's great for this defense. Again, it's 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 going to be to me for the defense is does Zadarius Smith unlock whatever's been missing, and that's yet to be determined. Remember, guys, he's over thirty years old, so you always got to kind of be on health watch, monitor him as well. He's had a good start to the year: five sacks, top fifteen in pressure, doing good things. So it, I think you, it, it'll be fine. But there's no, uh, like they said. Great quality defensive ends don't fall off of trees, but he was the best one available. So you get what you get. But, man, I I, I love the fact that if, if Atum Elfanu can stay healthy for this stretch of games and he adds another physical presence, and we just don't know yet about Emmanuel Mosley, you, you get a sense that he's good in man-to-man, but he just hasn't been healthy enough to be able to assess what he's about. So it's good to see him. He's got a good story. He's resilient. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that these two guys can stay healthy. Fingers crossed. Yeah. And Doc, I seen you post on Twitter. You had a conversation with J-Mo. How's he feeling? Obviously, first game back. Uh, is he going to be ready to go Sunday? How just how does it how is he feeling being back in the building? Yeah, um, he talked to the media 
And it was, you know, standard. Like there were some questions. Clearly, he got some prep in regards to, hey, uh, what did you learn, uh, you know, uh, about the suspension and things like that. And so it got to the middle of the media session. And and to me, it was just, you know, I always look at it from when people say, well, why did you ask that? Is that clickbait? Look, I didn't like write the story on that. And there's no click. When I post the video, there's no clicking on it. You just, I just, when my philosophy has always been, Sometimes I have waves of time where I don't ask questions. Sometimes I do. Really, the philosophy is that's the question I want to know is what's the message to someone like me who's watching you and you've been suspended now a couple of times. What's your message to kind of calm me down to not view you as a distraction? And his answer wasn't the best. I don't I don't think that, you know, maybe he could have took an extra second to think about it. But he said, I don't got a message. He's like, I'm he basically has said, which is I, I get it. Action speaks louder than words. But really. In that sense, the, the the correct answer is it's never going to happen again. I'm good. That's all anybody needed to hear when he looks into the camera. But he didn't say that. He said people are going to judge me. They're going to think of me, whatever they are. So there is a little bit of that rebellious attitude that he's got. I get it. I remember, you know, he's 23 years old. But, again, that's just something that he's got to showcase. You, you know, everybody trusts him and assumes that he's going to, you know, dot the I's and cross the T's. But he's got to show it now. And I do think he's ready. I think guys too, which I thought was in interesting. And sometimes the the blessing of having more time today, I had more time. I stayed at Allen Park till 536 and battled traffic before this interview. I read every word of what Jamison Williams said. He said something and it kind of showed up in my video too, flippantly, but it was real fast. He said, you know, I butted heads with Dan Campbell, but I love his support. Wait a minute. You butted head with Dan Campbell. There's no butting heads. Dan talks and you listen. So where's the butting heads? Like, are you confronting Dan? Are you like questioning Dan when he comes to you and says, Hey, what are you doing? There should be no butting heads with Dan Campbell, but there, you know, but I think from how you can read that, how I assessed it is Dan has talked to him and maybe JMO took it a certain kind of way. Like, Hey, think about this or kind of deflecting. But now he realizes that, Hey, Dan's got my back. Dan's going to deliver a message, however he, deliver it, he delivers it. And this is a football team that doesn't need distractions, that needs me to be available. So I think JMO grew up over this period of time. But there's also another nugget, too, because I wrote a headline last week because I asked the question. I said, Jared, or I don't know if I asked, but uh, uh, somebody, uh, I know I wrote the story. Jared Goff was asked last week, did you say anything to JMO? Do you feel like you need to say anything? He's like, I didn't say a word to JMO. Well, if you read the transcript of Jamison Williams, today he says, you know, I appreciate everybody that supported me. Uh, everybody was great, family, that. But he's like, there were some people I expected to message that didn't message. So I can't say that for a fact, you know, connecting the dots. But Jared Goff publicly said he didn't reach out. And Jamison Williams said, hey, some people I thought, you know, that's something to pay attention to. It's logical. I don't, mean, doc, don't start any. Don't start. I'm not starting. Listen, no, my locker no, room, doc. Not listen, in my locker room. There's no starting. Put the puzzle pieces together. The stories are out there. Jameson said it. Yeah. I can't confirm don't it do that and to lock me, doc. it. But you know, you got to pay attention because the last time Jamo was out there, was that a signal to him? One target? Was that a message? You never know. So let's see how fast. He gets in the good graces. And Gage, I'm not looking for stories. It's common sense. I wrote, J Jared Goff publicly said into a camera, I didn't say a word to him. And Jamison Williams said it into a camera. I expected some more people to reach out and they didn't. I mean, he might have just been talking about you, Doc. Your pillow, Did you reach out to him? But I, I got a master's degree and I can put two and two together that maybe he, maybe he just wanted a little text, a little more love. He's a receiver. Yeah. Rece and, and receivers like a little bit more attention. And I'm definitely aware of that because I love the attention. But I, I can't say – I can't confirm it, but just look at the stories. Yeah, and, and that's all – again, like that's your what your job is, Doc. Like your job is to try and put puzzle pieces that's together. smart. I wouldn't have thought of that, Doc. You're elite yeah. at what you do, so uh, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't have never thought of that. I don't think that's too far off. I, I do want to ask you, what was your – question to dan i by the way i went on a rant uh because the lions i can't hear these freaking questions doc and i'm trying to listen to you ask a question and dan like shut it down what was your uh, question yeah. 
now that you're here, I could I wanted I sure yeah. I I downloaded a volume booster to try and hear it. I couldn't hear it. What'd you yeah, say? they actually have the microphone moved up, but uh, I talk I I it's tough too because you gotta get your words out fast because there's like today there was like 19 other reporters. And if you heard the first question, I tried to talk over somebody to get that Zadarius question in. So here was my question, and it was a good one. My question was, Dan, were you guys close on any other moves besides basic talk? And he was like, we ain't talking about that. <laughs> he was oh, like, okay. uh, I can't talk about that. So, but, but look, that's a fair question. You have to ask it. Um, just in case he could have said, yeah, we were close. Or he could have said, you know, the market was really, you know, there could have been an answer that was a non-answer, but you have to ask it. I asked Dan, was there anything else in the works trade wise? And he shut that down, but, uh, that's fair because maybe they were trying for bigger. Maybe they got their door slammed in certain things. Maybe it was the same position that for the guy, you know, it's a great answer. It, it's no problem by me. I asked it, he answered it and that's the way we roll. But yeah, I wish they would, you know, uh, amplify but sometimes I ask the question so fast because I'm trying to, you know, speak over five, 15 other people. But that was the question. Dan gave a fair answer, and that's and and that's that. Hey, hey Doc, can I, I just want to ask you a question about the defense. Um, and, and we had this conversation yesterday on the show, and, and, and I've kind of been talking about the defense over the last three or four weeks. Uh, feels like AG, even without Hutch, like they've been able to put together a, a legit defense that's, I think, right now fifth in points per game allowed, but they're giving up a bunch of yards. What, what are your thoughts, like seeing, it, especially in Green Bay, the way they kind of went about it? They, they really only gave up that touchdown in garbage time. Do you think this defense is like it's legit? Like this isn't kind of a fraud type of deal? Because it is easy to say, like, versus these teams, maybe they're able to get these stops, but versus be, like better teams. What are your thoughts? Like, and I know it's outside, I'm not even like, really not the Zadarius Smith stuff, just like in general how they've been playing the last three weeks do you think it's a legit thing that we're seeing yeah real fast with the chat it's, it's always good um it's a good question they say is why would dan answer that you never assume you sometimes i've asked questions that i thought he would shoot down knowing that it was direct and he's answered it so you never like that's my simple philosophy is these are questions that i want to know that i believe other people would like and um Sometimes you answer to that. That's the nature of the game is that I get the blessing of asking them. And yes, most of the time, the person that's going to get shot down is me because I'm the one asking the direct questions that maybe nobody else will, will ask. So I have no problem getting shot down. You guys clearly know that because in the end, it's a blessing to be able to sit in the chair to ask questions that I I'm curious about. That's number one secret to be successful is be curious, ask everything. So that's the, the blessing of being able to, to be in that room every single day. Lions defense, huh? It's um, I like it. I, I'm I'm impressed because of the fact that they talk the talk and they walk the walk. They are able to get a lot of turnovers. They're led by Kirby Joseph and uh, Brian Branch, who are just really amongst. If you don't if you don't want to say they're the best, they're in the top three in the safety class in terms of one two on a team. They're playing out of this world, and it's fun to watch because it kind of gives the defensive line confidence and the secondary confidence that, hey, we got guys that are going to be around the football. Kirby Joseph's pick six was unreal. And also, guys, if you watched film, guess who's emerging? And it's great to see. Jack Campbell played out of his mind Very against good. the Packers, and he's, he's running to the football very well. He has numerous tackles. He's flying to the football. He's gaining the, uh, the respect of his teammates. You see him on film, and he's making impact, getting a little bit better in coverage. I know he's got a little bit of ways to go there, but Jack Campbell's coming along, and he's seeing that second-year growth where the game kind of starts to make a lot more sense. He's more he's playing more free, and it shows. So with a guy like that that could potentially start to be a leader, I'm impressed with this defense. It's doing a lot of things. So it is truly bend, don't break, not letting teams into the end zone. And if you just give the offense one or two more – two more possessions, this offense is lethal. And that's why I'm just starting to think, too, that what can carry them is just this offense is legitimately all world and can get better. So it's a fun ride to be on with this offense, right? This offense can just simply carry this defense. And so maybe that's why Brad Holmes is confident in just only, only getting one player at the deadline. And staying with the defense, Doc, but kind of looking forward to this weekend, more specifically against the run. When you have a running back in Joe Mixon, 
who is in every game that he has started this year has went for over 100 yards. And you look at what he's done over the past four weeks, four straight 100-yard games. You add in Darius Smith. What do you think this defense, after watching what Aaron Jones has done, after looking what um, – I'm, my Tony Pollard has done, and even last week with Josh Jacobs in the first half, over having over 90 rushing yards. What do you expect this run defense to look like against Joe Mixon, who's when he's been healthy this year has been a top five running back in the NFL, arguably? Yeah, I expect that the Texans are going to try similarly to run to the edges to test out what's going on to see, you know, if Isaiah Thomas and Levi can can stop it. Uh, up the middle is really silly to try with Ali McNeil and DJ Reader there, so. Uh, Joe Mixon, I do think that's going to be a strategy for uh, the Texans is try to get him going. But here's the problem. The Texans' offensive line has been brutal. Uh, and you know how I know that? I got C.J. Stroud on my fantasy team, and his numbers are taking a dump. And I'm lucky I'm 7-2, and two, but the last two weeks I had to do it. I'm like, how lucky am I? I got Baker Mayfield on my bench scoring 30 every week, and, uh, <laughs> and C.J. Stroud's only scoring 12. So I'm like, I got to finally bench C.J. Stroud. I loved I, – I, I had C.J. Stroud last year and was having great success, but he's been pressured. The offensive line has been substandard. That's the weakness of the Texans. I think the Lions are going to take advantage of it, and I think they're going to bring the, uh, bring the pressure from the secondary, from the linebackers. They're going to do some things to try and pressure uh, C.J. Stroud. The run game, eh, here's what you can assume. Probably 90, 95 yards. Ain't nobody getting 100 yards rushing on the ground against Aaron Glenn's defense. That's what they take pride in. And that's what's amazing is that look at the stretch of games that they've had not giving up 100 yards. I think everybody thought that last week it was done, but they clamped down and they held uh, they held the Packers running back uh, you know, to less than 100 yards after a nice start. So, man, it's, it's, it's great to see because it's, it's a philosophy – that clearly is working, and it's a football team that runs to the football. They tackle well, and you you rarely see a opposing running back into our second level without being touched. So it's 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 an amazing thing to see. It's it's a stout defense. So I I, I expect Joe Mixon if you're starting him this week, sit him in fantasy football. And Doc Brian Branch, you had the you had the chance to talk to him earlier. What was his thoughts on kind of the hit and just like really everything that came after that, him getting injected and whatnot? Just his basic thoughts and his kind of rerun of what happened. Yeah, look, man. Oh, that's the it's it's crazy. Okay, and guys, again, chat, don't get uh, too riled up by by me saying this, but you're walking a fine line here when you're openly talking about being violent and being aggressive and wanting to be that way and then going out there and laying the lumber to people. I, I mean, personally, I love it. I love the Ed Reed style of play, uh, th the way safeties used to come out there and handle business. Uh, Mark Carrier used to play that way. He was a former safety that was on the team. And you realize, man, that's Ronnie Lotts. Those guys – it just made my passion for defense grow just the way they would play the game. So Brian Branch is in that mold. But at the same token now, this is a couple of times he's, you know, helmet to helmet and done some things, but it's a split second decision. It's so tough to make that tough decision. I don't think he should have been ejected, but here's the problem. Okay. You have that situation happen. You get the penalty and now you're ejected. The next thing you do is probably something that's a little bit way overboard in terms of uh, middle fingers all over the place and, and getting another 15-yard penalty, which Dan Campbell talked to him about. And so what happens is, here's the part that's, it's again, mixed messages. He is standing in front of the media. He's got to act professional. He's like, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to do that. I don't want to be known as that. I don't want to be doing that. I can't be you know uh, having my two fingers in the air like Stone Cold Steve Austin. I can't be doing that. And... 15 minutes later, the media all leaves. What's posted on social media? All the secondary is wearing his shirt with the, and dancing and having a good time with it, with his face, and you see him in the background. So I get it. They're having fun, but there is that fine line. You guys got to remember, it's Detroit versus everybody. The league is looking at the Lions, and, and I think uh, you guys, knowing basketball, can harken back to this. The bad boys tried to run the league that way and to be nasty and to do it. And they were successful, gritty, and they won it. 
But the league tried to, you know, do their thing with the Jordan rules and tried to legislate that out. I think the league is on notice, especially in prime time in a, a 425 slot America's game of the week. I think the NFL said, hey, hey, pause this kneecap talk, pause this violence talk, and we're going to eject you. Here's the blessing, though. That's the part where they can rub it in my face and say, hey, we lost Brian Branch, and we even played better. We, we, have, we have Brandon Joseph there. Kirby can handle it all. They went on to win the game by 10, so it didn't impact anything. So, But to me, I'm more of the, hey, rein it in, fellas. Play violently within the, the confines of the game. Try not to get 30 yards in penalties on one play, maybe just 15. But it's a fine line. It's a very fine line of playing aggressive and playing uh, reckless. And I think that hit, it's just, it's unfortunate. It's bad timing for him. And here's the problem. He can talk all nicey-nice in front of the camera looking like me. But guess what's going to happen Saturday? You're going to read a story about Brian Branch having a massive fine. You're not going to do that to the league. They are going to find him quite a bit of money. And I'm probably, I'm guessing probably in the fifty dollars to $75,000 range. You got to send the message, hey, you can't be, you know, uh, waving your middle fingers in the air and calling us the B word in front of, in front of the whole world. So he's sorry. He did the corporate thing. But the lesson will be learned when his pocketbook gets hit. So it's going to be interesting to see that fine line that these guys got to, that, that, I, I love the aggression, but you just got to rein it in especially if the flags start uh, flying and you're in a game in the playoffs, you got to rein it in. You can't take another additional 15 yard penalty. It's going to be interesting to see how it happened, but the ejection was bogus. The most bogus ejection I think I've ever seen. And uh, luckily the Lions overcame it. Hey doc, we were talking earlier about Ennis Rakestraw and, and kind of the storyline there. Haven't heard a lot about him. He, he seems to be, you'll see at times if there is an injury to, to maybe a Carlton Davis, that Kendall Vildor will go in there. Maybe some, some rarely it's, it's Ennis getting any reps. I understand that because you don't want two rookies out there, but what, what have you kind of heard, I guess, in the background or what you've seen about Ennis Rakestraw and his progression? Yeah, it's a, it's a, you know, he's a developing player. Uh, they're putting him at different spots to see, um, but again, you know, he's also, here, here's the thing when you miss practice time, it's just hard to get out there in games. And that's how Dan Campbell's always going to be. You got to prove it in practice week after week after week. And it was good to see him a little bit uh, a couple weeks ago. And uh, I think he's a developing player. Um, I think that for him, it's still more of a steeper learning curve. Uh, clearly Terry and Arnold is out there and, and playing a lot more. I think that the coaching staff has a little bit more trust in Vildor. So we'll see now when Mosley gets into the mix, how that all shakes out. So uh, we'll see how that all shakes out. But he's a developing player, and I think it's it's a benefit to him now at least to focus on special teams, focus on uh, growing each and every week in terms of the of the secondary. But, uh, man, it's tough. It's it's a tough position to, to grasp, especially when you're not playing as much, no doubt. Um, just want my, the, the weekly, at, at this point, we we'll probably do this every week at some point, doc, just the weekly Jared Goff MVP meter, uh, from you. I know this is the thing too, cause Jared Goff, I, I think it's an odd, odd situation. He's not putting up like these three, 400 yard games, but he, the control of the offense that he has and what he's doing with his offense seems to be at a different level that no one in the NFL is doing. Even the guys that are putting the numbers up. Where are you at with the Jared Goff MVP stuff? I just want to. I'm going to ask you this every week until he wins it, Doc. Just want the the, the meter, Jared Goff meter. Where are we at? How are we feeling? Um, percentage, all of that. I want that from you here. Yeah, it's great to it's great to talk about. And so for those that want the shirt, uh, you, I think you can find it through Made in Detroit. I think you guys got uh, stuff going on too. So look for it. Look for the merch. It's all fun. But I'm curious to see. Like I said, I love defense. I love defense. I love aggression. But there's these pesky dudes in zebra outfits that can wreck your life. And that's where the – that's the, and also two guys, remember, if you are in the chat – not liking the words coming out of my mouth, then directly you're saying you don't like the words coming out of Dan Campbell's mouth because that's what he's telling us, and it makes sense. Clearly, your head coach talked to Brian Branch about, hey, don't do that. So if you don't like what I'm saying, I I'm surprised you guys are disappointed in Dan Campbell. You seem like you guys are uh, very high in support of uh, the head coach of the Lions. So uh, remember, from the, from the uh, Bill Belichick, from the Bill Parcells tree, Sean Payton, these aren't nice guys when they're not happy, okay? So remember, he's nice in front of the camera. He's nice to me in my face, but he's a football coach. 
And you know he said some things to Brian Branch. So if you don't like what I'm saying, I think you need to take a turn to the to the other side. Jared Goff, man, he's getting praise galore, right? Aaron Rodgers spent a segment talking about him. Uh, he's playing out of this world. And here's the crazy part. Dan Campbell said it. He said that, hey, wait a minute. Jared Goff could be entering his prime like right now. Like, can we get five more years of this? This is amazing. And it's just, it's, a, it's an amazing thing to look at when you see a player put it all together and, and to play and put, I mean, this is stuff that has to shut everybody up. He's playing out of this world. And it's, uh, it's an amazing th- situation to look at a player that has shut everybody up, is getting praised nationally, top three quarterback in the NFL, in the MVP conversation. And right now he's the MVP. I don't think that uh, you you clearly noticed that the Detroit Lions would uh, fall off the face of the earth uh, and not be where they are without Jared Goff. And it's amazing to see, man. It's fun to watch. It's fun to go back and watch the film of the throws he's making, of the pinpoint accuracy that he's got. So it's uh, it's uh, it's it's fun to be a part of. And uh, ah, so that's the uh, uh, I teased it this morning. Uh, Nine o'clock tomorrow. Uh, there will be a you know story that could feature QB1. So pay attention. And it, it has some interesting nuggets in there. So pay attention. It's an exclusive. Uh, the DOC got an exclusive with uh, Jared Goff. And uh, people want to talk to me. You know, it's uh, unique when uh, people notice what you're doing. And they, they're calling me. So this is the dream is when you don't have to do the work. People just call you and say, hey, will you feature this and feature that? And I'm just like, yeah. Sure. I'll, I'll feature your, your company. I'll feature this. I'll feature that. And you guys are going to like it. I think uh, it will be something that you guys will be impressed with. So uh, Jared Goff, pro, man. But here's the tough part. Because he's got a radio interview, his talks with us are just like really fast. Like his transcripts are like 100 words. Like the word, like it's just like, blah, 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 and he's done. He's like, uh, yeah, it's cool. It's awesome. And uh, Aaron Rodgers praised me. That's awesome to hear. Great. And that's his answer. And then the next answer is, oh, man, yeah, I don't really like people talking about us great because we got to play nine more games. And uh, if they talk about us nice, that's great. But, I really, you know, they talk about us bad, whatever. That's it. So he just like he just wants to get in and out in like five minutes. And so it's a tough interview. And he said something interesting today at the end. But, man, you know, it's tough because uh, you can tell he's just getting through it as fast as humanly possible. We can't even like I'm trying to write Jared Goff stories because he's interesting. But typically, they end up being what other people are saying about him. Stephen A. called him the MVP. Aaron Rodgers just spent, you know, a, a ten, five, ten minutes just telling everybody in the world to praise him. But this is awesome. Jared Goff, enjoy it. And this is high caliber, world class quarterbacking. And I guess this is my opportunity to say it's better than what I've seen with Matthew Stafford when he was here. So it makes me happy. It's good quarterback play, limiting the turnovers as much as possible, not making the big mistake all the time, and winning a bunch of games. Guys are seven and one. So give the man his flowers even more. He's the league MVP as we talk. Cheers to Jared Goff. Thank you, Jared. I I appreciate your help that you're gonna give to our website. It's it's tremendous. (laughs) And it's tremendous, Doc. And a perfect segue into my question. Lions are seven and one. Jared Goff looks like an MVP. We asked Jeremy this question yesterday when he joined. Where's the next loss? Because the way that they're playing, you look at the schedule, you're like, I, it's hard to put another loss in there. But you know one is going to happen, two most likely. Their lines are going to lose again. When do you think that next loss pops up on the schedule, Doc? 7-1, mm. and one, I think they beat the Texans. Uh, you know, uh, on lines on SI, I gave that assignment to Vito. I said, uh, what do you think? I think he wrote 15-2 and two with the only loss to the Bills. Uh, you know, probably a division game. Maybe the Packers get their revenge. Uh, I don't think the Bears, I think they're, you know, the, the Thanksgiving game, and then you have the next game on a Thursday night with the Packers. Um, maybe the 49ers on the road. I could see them 14 and 3, 15 and 2. The game that's you know got my attention is the Bills. Uh, the Bills game will be intriguing with Allen. He's limiting the turnovers, playing at a very high clip, but you know, there is a chance. I mean, you could say, you know, 15 and two, 16 and one run the table. Right. But, you know, it's the NFL. There's going to be games where maybe you just don't show up. Something happens. Maybe that Bears game because it's always tough to show up. And, and I think the Lions have struggled on Thanksgiving as of late because it's that just short three day window where you play on a Sunday. 
and then you have just basically walkthroughs, and it's all mental. So maybe that Bears game might not be the best game on Thanksgiving. But look, guys, number one seed. I told you guys when we started the year, number one goal is, is get that number one seed. Get because the bye week was early. Get that early buy. Uh, get that bye week in the postseason will help everybody. And maybe you get John Kaminsky back for the next game. You never know. Get some more guys healthy. So it's a it's a fun opportunity, right? To uh, it's a good question to ask. But let's ride the wave of positivity all the way through until they lose that second game. Man, they could go eight nine. Look, if they get past the Texans, which I think they will, mm-hmm. the next couple of weeks, it's just like. You know, I'm setting up my uh, social calendar because I'm not concerned about the Colts, not concerned about the Jaguars. I'm like, this is the social time. This is where Doc might be out, out and about uh, in Macomb County, the best county in America. Yes. Uh, having some fun, taking my pictures and uh, enjoying some time at some local bars. John, what NFC team? It, maybe if they're, I mean, I know the Lions are the clear best, but any NFC team, the Eagles starting to win, 49ers getting McCaffrey back, any NFC team has you on watch to challenge the Lions? Yeah, I talked about it on the latest Lone Wolves podcast. It was a great conversation with my guy, Christian, good writer, excellent, excellent journalist, world class, nice guy, puts up with me. The guy, uh, the team that I'm concerned with is number two seed right now, and that's the Washington commanders. I like what they did and guess what they did guys. They did a little bit of a chess move. They went out and got Lattimore. Well, Lattimore definitely knows a little bit about Aaron Glenn. So that's some Intel that they now have on the Detroit lions. And they're actually, what's great about that situation too, is that could answer some questions as well because they have a quarterback on a rookie deal, which some people talked about. They have money invested in other spots. They have a, they have great coach, in Coach Quinn, everybody in the world respects him for his defense. They kind of have that um, special mentality when you get a Hail Mary. You got that young quarterback that's learning. You got, you know, a nice running back, a veteran in Austin Eckler. McLaurin is all-world veteran. That can do some things. So I would love it. And also, guys, full circle. 1991, the Lions got to the NFC title on the road and lost. Could you imagine the commanders come into town for the NFC championship for the lions to handle who would blink first. And I think it would be Jaden Daniels, but the team that concerns me is the commanders. I like what they're doing. I like how they're playing, but all the teams that everybody will talk to you about the Eagles and Saquon Barkley, he's on my fantasy team and he's doing some crazy ass shit with his maneuvers and, and what he's doing. He's carrying that team. Uh, I liked what they're doing. Um, people are kind of whispering to me about the Falcons and telling me about, Kirk Cousins and his aura and the, you know, all the good things that he's got going on. So I'm intrigued by the Falcons. They're six and three. Uh, but you know, never discount the 49ers, never discount the, you know, the teams that are right there and, and, and competing with the lions. But I just think the lions are the class of the NFC. I see, like, I can see it. I can see the lions in the super bowl. I just can't my PTSD. Like I said, uh, I think I've said it here. I said, if they win the super bowl, I will be in shock. Like I might take a minute to post the, the game winning story because I'm in shock. Like, holy shit, the Lions won the Super Bowl. So th- I think they're the class of the NFC. And you, <laughs> if they get the number one seed, there's nobody coming to Ford Field and beating them. The fans not at all. Happen. They're going to be screaming their heads off. Hey, Doc, what do you have? Uh, just want to get your thoughts on this Sunday's game score predictions. How do you think the game plays out? Um, and kind of any predictions, wild or bold predictions you have for this game Sunday on top of your score prediction? Yeah, I love Sunday night games. I love the opportunities that are presented. Uh, It sucks that Nico Collins is not the full strength Nico Collins. I doubt he plays, but if he's there, he's not going to be, he's he's battling a hamstring and he may not even make it through the game. I would have liked to have seen a healthy, like I would have liked to have seen this game week one, you know, where everybody's got their full strength and everybody's, you know, going to town. But right now, look, man, the, the Texans offensive line is atrocious. I just think the Lions take advantage. Uh, I see the Lions offense rolling. I think that in prime time, I think everybody's looking at an opportunity to get their name in the highlights. Montgomery, Gibbs, James, I think Jamison Williams is going to come back and show out a nice deep pass. So I think 10-point win, 30-20 is in order. And you come back 8-1, and one, and you really show off what this football team is about. And uh, you get to the opportunity to have basically two bye weeks with the the Colts and the Jaguars. So eight and one prime time. And I think too, it's good. You, you get stories, you get some features, you get to NBC. So Tariko and his crew will 
talk to uh, whoever, you know, we'll see who gets uh, who gets the uh, attention this week. And uh, real fast, did you uh, – you never know what Amon Ra is going to sh- show out with. Did you hear his podcast? Did you hear what – I said it on my podcast. I didn't air it out. I, I, I discussed it. But his shirt said Green Bay sucks in the front. Did you know what it said on the back? No. Okay. He said it on a podcast, so I, I I kept it PG on my podcast. But it was Green Bay sucks on the front and Detroit fucks on the back. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it's great. The guy is full on, like, when I saw that, I was like, well, uh, you know, a little bit conservative. Like, wait a minute, that's a little bit bold. But he talked to talk, and this is – um. Something new, like with the Lions. Like, again, you know, when, when we talk about Brian Branch and the swagger and everybody just being that way, I'm not used to that. I'm not used to, this, like, a football team that comes in and says, we're coming to kick your ass, this is how it's going to be, and then they actually go do it. So this is great. It's an adjustment for me. So be patient. I'm coming along. I'm seeing it. I'm liking it. I'm writing, I'm writing it, but I'm still, like I said – Older guy looking at it like, hey, can you just kind of, you know, also do it with a little bit of decorum? But this is also great. This is also very much in line with how I would operate if I was allowed to just be like, Doc rules and y'all drool. That's great. That's that. Yeah, if I was allowed to do that, that would be that would be great. But I like to keep it a little more buttoned up in my older age and uh, seeing what's going on. I got to be look, you guys know I'm not uh, totally corporate. But you got to be a little bit corporate when you're working with other people. You know what I mean? Just a little bit. You yeah. Know, you can't just be – if you heard the things that I would say if I was completely unleashed, man, it'd be wild. Well, we love you, Doc. Good, great stuff today. You guys can check out Doc, of course, Detroit Lions God. and Sports Illustrated. He's doing some great work. We'll talk to hey, you next Wednesday, my guy. Doc, what's up, what's up? Do you, do, I'm guessing you have to work Sunday night. You have to be working. Yeah, uh, every game I'm covering the game, watching it. Uh, look, man, I, I was gonna go. I wanted to go. Okay, well, that's I, what I was gonna ask if you wanted yeah, to come. The trip, the trip to Dallas, like personally, was great. Oh, it was fulfilling. Like I got my fill. Uh, it was costly, but but just not an issue for me. But it just I missed my family. I I truly that's did. Fair. It was tough to leave. The girls were. I got two daughters. They were in tears when I left. The flights were perfect, but. You know, I just, it's just the experience of being at home, covering the game, having a good time. And uh, the, the Lions asked me, like, why don't you travel more? And I always say, I got to, I'm, I'm attached to my family first. And also, too, you guys see the storm. Like, we, I talked about it with the media today at Allen Park. I said, if I was sitting here today and I saw that storm track going through Houston and that shit's coming Monday morning, I'd be fucking having a heart attack right now. I am not a good flyer. I don't want, to be thinking about that all the time. And I just think that I'm more relaxed from the comforts of my home. And, and plus here's the thing, here's a secret too. For the most part, I can do a game story, one additional thing and, and post it at midnight. And then all the rest of the stuff will come out in the morning. So I don't really need to, uh, a lot of the work happens during the day so I can enjoy some football and I can share probably that day because of what's happened this week. The numbers have been astronomical. Uh, monthly numbers happening in a week are, are crazy. So I may just tone it down for Sunday, just a couple stories. You never know. But to me, I'm going to just enjoy covering the game, relax. And also too, what's fun is I got a 14 year old nephew. And sure. if you think I'm bad, <laughs> if, if he keeps up this, he's going to be doing podcasts with me and we're going to be lighting up the world in 10 years because he's not only smart, not only handsome, but wicked smart, wicked <laughs> into uh, the TikToks and the engagement, digital content. He's just all over the place, can pull up. If I say, hey, w- w- I ask him about anything, he'll tell me about it. He can pull it up within a moment's notice. Pro football reference up the wazoo, PFF. He uses all my logins, and he's 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 great. We got a special connection. So to miss out on also uh, hearing him cry when his uh, you know he's got fantasy, he's in fantasy, he's very competitive. And when he uh, the Lions were winning and he he was in a fantasy matchup and somebody else that he was matching up against scored and he was just throwing things down. It was just I I, I had I took great pride in spending time with him. I'm attached to my family. 
At, Doc, I, I just wanted to throw it out there. I wanted, I wanted to throw it out there. Yeah, we are doing an event at the Tin Roof, so I mean, yeah, I know. Hey, bring your laptop. Come work there and watch the game with the fellas. I'm sure some people in the chat here that watch us every Wednesday would like to meet you. Maybe it's a very, it's a distinct possibility. It's going to depend on uh, how the games going that more. Uh, the games are that day. It's a possibility. I mean, more maybe more than fifty percent. Uh, we over we gotta, 50%. Hey, 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 there we go. There we go. Hey, boom, we got to pay that fee, that doc fee. You know. Yeah. You know, yeah what's the guys, doc fee? What's the, any, the doc any invite? Fee I don't think seriously, I really appreciate that. You guys have fun, and uh, it, it, like I said, I don't need to come on air. I just would like to watch you guys do your thing, watch a football game because I got to be like I got to type from the start to the finish, so I got to be in the background. Yeah, you're but, um it, It's it's fun what you guys do uh, when uh, when Kirby got the pick six. Uh, I love the fan groups in town all across the town. When you get to see the bonds that you guys have and others have with their friends, it's, it's special. People see it. It's, it's real. And uh, I appreciate seeing it across Detroit, the fans that get together. It's a, it's a nice bond to me. I sacrifice that for the professional nature of the job, but you guys and others, I live vicariously through you. Um, yeah. I, I had my fun sharing in sports. I did my tail. I did my tailgating. We, we had some fun. We had oh, some fun. I was in fourth bad, field no. sometimes, maybe when I shouldn't have been. Yeah, he he he's uh, the doc in his heyday. I mean, he had some. Hey, <laughs> the man was on a mission. That's all. Hey, we appreciate you, Doc. We'll talk to you next Wednesday. Good luck this weekend, and keep up the great work, my friend. Thank you, boys. Visit Lions on SI. I appreciate what you guys are doing. Keep up the great content, boys. Appreciate you. There you go, John Macri. Doc. Appreciate you, Doc. The man. Joining the show. I mean, he he, he the guy's <laughs> wow. I mean, he, he's a special cat. The doc. Wow. By the way, brought to you as always by BetUS. Hey, what's going on there? It's Jeff Iyer Freddy. Appreciate you for finishing the video. You can check out one of the videos here suggested or show support by commenting, liking, and subscribing. And buy your merchandise. FisherCTSports.com.